wanted to talk to everyone today inshallah about a really important concept and that's the concept of arrogance and also the opposite of arrogance which is what we call humility humbleness and the perfect example the 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 ultimate example of humility and humbleness is of course the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's a reason why allah's made him the standard of everything good that's in the uh, everything good every quality allah has declared him within the quran to be the standard of that laqad kan lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam embodied humility he lived the ultimate humble life and the best example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's humility so he's of course the best example of humility and the ultimate display of humility within his life was at the occasion of fath makkah the conquest of makkah it was the most glorious day of his life you have to understand the historical context so to briefly explain to you the layout of the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the first 20 years of his life the people of makkah the people of quraish they had persecuted him they had uh tortured him they had slandered him called him a liar called him a poet um accused him of all types of all types of horrible things they even tried to assassinate him not once but multiple times they kicked him out of his own city out of his own hometown and anyone who would dare to follow him who would be willing to believe in him they would persecute them they would torture them mercilessly So basically they had made his life difficult for 20 years. They had killed his family members, tortured his followers. They had done so much to him. After 20 years, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was now entering the city of Mecca as the conqueror of Mecca, the, the the victor. Today the victory was his. Today he had the upper hand. This was the most glorious day in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to achieve victory over the people that had tortured and persecuted him for 20 years. Now if you look throughout the annals of human history what you'll find is that any leader any conqueror any king any general anyone who had ever been in such a position before was finally achieving victory over his opposition that had opposed him for years on years decade after decade you would find that those people those conquerors those leaders they would enter into the town the city just imagine just picture how they would enter in at the head of the army riding a big white horse trumpets blaring people dancing and singing rose petals being thrown that's how they would enter into the city but now we come to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he's achieving such an amazing victory and how is he entering into the city at the back of the army there's no trumpets there's no music there's no singing there's no rose petals it's quiet the mood is somber Everyone is engaged in praising and glorifying Allah quietly praying for the guidance of these people that they are conquering and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is all the way at the back of the army with his head bowed down so low that the narration actually mentions the hadith actually says that it was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam head was almost bouncing off the back of the animal that he was riding his head was practically bouncing off the back of the animal his head was bowed down so low he didn't have his chest held that high his head up high look at me everyone oh his head was down low and he's praising and he's glorifying allah and attributing this entire victory to allah thanking allah praying for the guidance of these people this is how he entered into the city of makkah when he lined up in front of the people when he gathered the people of makkah together and they were all crying and begging pleading with him be merciful to us be kind to us you're generous you're kind Don't 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 do what we did. Don't don't look at what we had done. You're better than us. At that time the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I'll say to you what Yusuf said to his brothers, la tathriba alaykum al-yawm." I have no beef. I have no grudge with you today. I have no score to settle with you today. Yaghfiru Allahu lakum wa huwa arhamur rahim. Go seek your forgiveness with Allah. He's the most merciful of all those capable of showing mercy. I have nothing to so score to settle with you today. And then it's narrated that later on when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam standing in the Kaaba with all the people of Makkah gathered there and they were cleansing the Kaaba and purifying the Kaaba and about to say declare the name of Allah at the Kaaba the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said some beautiful words La ilaha illa Allah wahda There's no one worthy of worship but Allah alone Sadaqa wahda 
He fulfilled his promise. وَنَصَرَ abda, And he helped his slave. He helped his slave. He didn't say messenger, he didn't say prophet, he said slave. The Prophet ﷺ found it dignified, found it an honor to be the slave of Allah and to call himself the slave of Allah. Not just at any occasion, but at the most glorious moment of his life, he turns around and doesn't say, I'm the messenger of Allah, I'm the leader here, I'm the conqueror. No, he says, he calls himself the slave of Allah. And then he goes on to say what? وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدًا وَعَزَّ جُنْدَهُ He strengthened his army. وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدًا And who defeated all these people? I didn't. We didn't. Allah alone did. Allah granted this victory. I have nothing to do with this. That's humility. You have the upper hand. You have every, you've been tortured by these people, persecuted by these people. This is your moment to just let it out of your system. To relieve yourself emotionally, psychologically for once, be able to just, just say yes, today I win. But even at that occasion, look how humble he is. Look at the humility of the Prophet He forgives the people, lowers his head, thanks Allah, praises Allah, calls himself the slave of Allah. This is the ultimate display of humility. We all have moments in our life where, you know, we, we feel like we're on top of the world. You get an amazing job, you get a raise, you got the best grades, you were, you were able to win out over a friend or some competition. You know, you had somebody you were arguing, debating with, you had a confrontation with, you feel like you won the confrontation. We all go through those small, small moments in our life. But we feel the need to gloat, to boast, to be arrogant. We should remember the example of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the last thing I wanted to add, this video was pretty much just about, the message here today was about arrogance, was about humility. But I wanted to add something here. What was the effect? You know, if you win, if you beat someone at something, if you end up coming out on top, you have the last laugh, as they say. And you can gloat and you can boast and you can, you know, uh, slam your chest and you can dance around and parade around. Sure, absolutely, you can do that. But what ends up happening to that person that you just defeated? They, he hates you even more now. He's waiting for the next opportunity he can get back at you. Because you rubbed it in. But the Prophet ﷺ, what did he do? He defeated these people after 20 years. But when he behaved with humility, what was the reaction? What was the effect on those people? Fatimaka, there's another beautiful, there's so many amazing things about the incident of Fatimaka. I encourage all the viewers and the listeners to go and read the life of the Prophet But there's so many beautiful things, but one of the more amazing things about Fatimaka was so many key members of the opposition to the Prophet So many key individuals who were at the forefront of hating the Prophet and hating Islam. They ended up accepting Islam at this moment. I'll give you a few names. Hind, she was the wife of Abu Sufyan. She was the woman who had hired Wahshi, an African slave. She had promised him his freedom and promised him a lot of money to assassinate the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ during the Battle of Uhud. And once he told her that he had taken him out, he had killed him, she went down into the battlefield, mutilated his body. She mutilated a woman took a knife to a dead body, the body of a dead person, and cut off the nose and the ears and cut the chest open and pulled out the internal organs. A woman did this. She hated the Prophet so much. And this is the venom, this is, this is how poisonous she was, how much she hated him. That woman, as much as she hated him, when the Prophet was so forgiving, so humble, she ended up coming to the Prophet and she, she actually covered herself up. She said she, has, she said she was afraid. Somebody recognized her, they would kill her or something. She comes to the Prophet Sallallahu reveals her face, says, I'm Hind. The daughter of Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan. And she says that, I've come to accept Islam. And she says, she says in the narration, that yesterday there was no one on, no one on this earth that I hated more than you. And today there's no one that I love more than you. That was what happened. He turned hearts, changed people, completely turned their hearts through his love, through his compassion, through his humility, his humanity. 
Ikrama, the son of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl was the fiercest enemy of the Prophet ﷺ. Hated the Prophet ﷺ with a passion. His son, who had fought by his side, his father's side, in the battlefield multiple times against the Muslims. What did he do? He had, he had actually ran away from Mecca. His wife comes to the Prophet ﷺ and says, My husband ran away. He was afraid you would come, you would kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, No, I have no beef with Ikrama today. He's called back. He, she says, will you give him safe passage? He said, yes. Ikrama is safe. Nobody, he makes an announcement. Nobody's to harm Ikrama. Let him come peacefully. He arrives back in Mecca, comes to the Prophet ﷺ, and when the Prophet ﷺ gets the news that Ikrama is about to arrive, he turns to the Sahaba and says, I realize Abu Jahl was one of our worst enemies, and a lot of the Muslims would sometimes, you know, just, you know, they would say bad things about Abu Jahl, but the Prophet ﷺ said that, look, Ikrama is coming, that is his father at the end of the day. It will hurt his feelings. Nobody say anything bad about Abu Jahl. Don't say anything bad about Abu Jahl. It will hurt Ikrama's feelings. He's coming to us peacefully. Let him come. When he comes, when he arrives, due to the kindness, this humility, this humanity, he accepts Islam, becomes a Muslim. Becomes a Muslim. And you know where he ended up dying at the end of his life? He ended up dying in the battlefield defending Islam as a Muslim. The same man, the son of Abu Jahl. And the stories go on and on and on and on. So many individuals, they were changed, they were affected by this love, this compassion, this kindness, this humility, this humanity. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, uh -huh.